Special Olympics Florida welcomes you to day three of the 2021 Youth Summit, fortifying tomorrow's leaders. Please welcome back President and CEO of Special Olympics Florida, Sherry Wheelock. Good morning, Special Olympics Florida athletes, unified partners, and coaches. My name is Sherry Wheelock, and I'm the president and CEO of Special Olympics Florida. Welcome to the third and final session of the 2021 Virtual Youth Summit. Over these past two days, you've learned how to cope with stress, how to manage stressful situations, and how the power of music can be used to assist with emotional and behavioral stress. Well, today's session will be focused on introducing two additional forms of relief through yoga and mindfulness. In our yoga session, we will focus on providing each of you with a better understanding of different yoga poses and the benefits of those. We will also utilize mindfulness and breath work to provide additional tools that can be used in all facets of life. We truly hope you have all enjoyed the content over the past three days, and I look forward to seeing each of you back on the playing field in 2021. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, and thank you again for joining us for day three of the Special Olympics Florida Youth Summit. My name is Sydney Parsley. I'm the Director of Health and Fitness Programs for Special Olympics Florida. We are excited to practice some meditation and yoga today as a group before having a roundtable discussion about mental and emotional wellness. <laughs> meditation and yoga are two unique practices that can be used to focus the mind and body. In meditation, we focus our thinking on a particular object or thought with the goal of training our brain to be more aware and help us stay calm and stable. <laughs> In yoga, we can use some of the same techniques as meditation and also include specific body movements. Both practices share many of the same benefits for our minds and bodies. Together, yoga and meditation can help us be more focused in our thoughts and present in our daily lives. They can help us feel more relaxed, both physically and mentally, become more flexible, and become stronger. One of the great things about meditation is that it can be practiced anywhere. At first, it is helpful to practice meditation in a quiet space where you can feel relaxed and focused. But as you do more of it, you can actually learn to meditate anywhere. One of the great things about yoga is that you do not need any special equipment to practice it. It's nice to have a mat, towel, or blanket spread out in the space you're practicing in so that you'll be more comfortable. You can practice yoga inside or outside or from a chair if that's more comfortable for you. Have you ever tried yoga or meditation before? Let us know in the chat. If you haven't already, we encourage you to find a quiet place that you can sit, lay down, and move around for the next 45 minutes as we have a chance to practice four different types of yoga and meditation. Let's begin with a short meditation with Susan Proper, well-being coach and yin yoga expert. Take it away, Susan. Hi, Susan Proper. I'm glad you're here for today's meditation. We are going to be doing a happy heart meditation today. So sit back, relax, or lay down and relax. Softly close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. And we'll begin our meditation in just a minute. Okay, you should be ready. Let's start. So, take a nice deep breath and sigh it out. One more time, nice deep breath. Sigh it out. Good. All right, now just breathe normally and relax. Just let your chest rise and fall in normal breathing. So today we're going to take a journey into our own hearts. A very special and beautiful place. 
There are times when we might feel sad or we might feel down, and that's okay. Anytime we feel sad, we can check in with our heart. We can choose to surround ourselves with a beautiful glowing light to bring ourselves comfort during worrisome times. First, you might see this as sunlight, warm, calming, soothing to your body and mind. It might be yellow and misty. Breathe it in deeply and allow it to relax and comfort you. Notice how it gives you a sense of peace. Feel that warm glowing light surrounding your body. Watch now as the light changes to soft blue, like the color of the sky on a clear dreamy day. The soft blue calms you and brings you even more peace now. You might begin to feel as if you are drifting on a cloud. Gently and ever so softly, the light now changes into a pinkish color. Just watch what it does. Breathe in deeply now as you allow the light pink color to gently flow into your body and flow directly to your heart. Feel the gentle light nudge away any hurts. It helps you let go of any sadness and any worry as you exhale. Pay attention to the fact that as you exhale, any hurt feelings, pain or sadness, your heart begins to feel lighter and a little freer. The soft, gentle light fills up the space in your heart and it shines out any sadness or pain. See the soft, glowing light fill up all that space in your heart. Gently easily and lovingly. Breathe this peacefulness deeply into every part of you and notice the calm and stillness take over. Life just feels better. Your heart feels better. This feeling will stay with you throughout the day. Remember that you can always call on this golden light to help you at any time. Imagine your heart now beating with happiness, jumping with joy and excitement at how many wonderful people and beautiful things surround you. Life is so good and you feel peaceful. Take a moment 
just to feel gratitude for all the love and caring that surrounds you. It's so amazing. Feeling calm and peaceful now. Bring your attention back to the space that you are in and your day, knowing that peace and happiness are yours. Take another deep breath and sigh it out. Give yourself a big hug and a stretch and open your eyes and have a wonderful day full of happiness and joy. Namaste. Welcome back everyone. We hope you enjoyed that happy heart meditation with Susan. You may have noticed that Susan started the meditation with a couple of slow, deep breaths. Deep breathing can help us to slow down our heart rate, which can help control our blood pressure and decrease the stress hormones in our body. When practicing deep breathing, try to inhale through your nose for five seconds, hold the breath for five seconds, then exhale through the mouth for five more seconds. Imagine as you're doing this that you are inhaling the good smell of a candle or flower, holding, then blowing out the candle or blowing the petals off of the flower. When you practice deep breathing on your own, repeat this process three to five times. How do you feel after that happy heart meditation? Using just one word, let us know in the chat. I would say I'm feeling calm. Next, we're going to complete a yoga session together led by Shawnee Thornton Hardy. You can do this part of the session sitting on the floor, in a chair, or another comfortable space. If you have a yoga mat or towel nearby, we encourage you to lay it down in your space and get comfortable. If you can, it's good to have enough space around you that you can stretch out your arms and legs so that you can follow along with all of the movements. If at any time during the video, you are not comfortable doing one of the movements, it is okay to skip it. Shawnee is going to share with us some of the benefits of yoga, when are good times to practice yoga, and some basic movements that you can do as a group or on your own. Take it away, Shawnee. Hi everyone, I am Shawnee Thornton Hardy, the founder of Asanas for Autism and Special Needs, and also the founder of Yoga Therapy for You. And I'm truly honored and excited to get to share this little mini yoga practice with you during your summit. My mission and my passion is the same as the Special Olympics, and that is inclusion, making sure that everyone feels included in the activities and opportunities out in the world. And the wonderful thing about yoga is that anyone can do yoga. If you have a body, if you have the ability to breathe, then you can do yoga. So we're gonna have a little bit of fun and do some breathing and do some movement. And the focus of our practice is just going to be tapping into our own inner strength, tapping into our own resilience and our ability to get through hard things or ability to get through stressful things and yoga can be a great practice for that. It's also a great practice for warming up before you do any kinds of sports activities. So you can do a few stretches and do some breathing, get in tune to your body. So these are some great poses that you can do before you do some of your other activities that you do. So our first practice we're going to do is a breathing practice called balloon belly breathing. And I like to think about my belly as a balloon when I do this breath. And I sometimes like to think about what color I would like my balloon belly to be. So if you have a color that you'd like your balloon belly to be, just think about what color you would like it to be. 
So when we breathe in, we're going to make our belly fill up like a balloon and expands like a balloon. We breathe in through our nose like this. And out through our mouth like this. So let's take the hands to the belly. Think about what color you want your balloon belly to be. And then breathe in and let your belly fill up like a balloon. And breathe out, let all the air out of your balloon slowly. Try that again. Breathe in, fill up your balloon. Breathe out, let your air out. One more time. Breathe in, fill it up. And breathe out, let all the air out of your balloon. Wonderful. Our next pose we're going to do, we can do this seated in a chair or you can do it seated on the floor. So if you have a, if you're in a chair and you want to do your practice in a chair, all of these poses can be done in a chair. Or if you're seated on the floor, then you can practice from the floor. And the first pose is going to be mountain pose. So we'll sit up nice and strong and tall like a mountain. Think about what your body would look like if it was a mountain. It would be nice and tall and strong. And then we'll reach our arms up, breathe in through your nose. Reach your arms up, your arms might come wider, they might come closer, and then breathe out. And let all your air out. Let's try that again. Stretch your arms up, breathe in. You might make a mountain peak, and then breathe out, and bring your hands back down to your head. One more time, breathe in, and breathe out. Just notice how that feels to be like a strong, tall mountain. Our next one is called Open Book, Closed Book. Books have spines just like we do, and it's really important for us to stretch our spines. So we're going to take our elbows and our hands together like we're about to read our favorite book or magazine. And then we'll breathe in, open the book. Breathe out, close the book. Breathe in, open. Breathe out, close. One more time. Breathe in, open. Breathe out, close. Let your hands come back down. So our next pose is reach for the moon, and this is a great pose for stretching our spine and stretching our side body. So you just take your right hand, reach it up nice and high, sit up nice and tall, and then just start to reach the hand over to the other side, like you're waving to the moon on that side. Breathe in. And breathe out. And come all the way back up. Stretch your left hand up, reach up nice and tall. Reach over to the other side like you're waving to the moon on the other side. Breathe in and breathe out. And then come all the way back to the center and let your hands come down. Now we're going to be like butterflies. So we'll take our feet together. And if you're in a chair, I'm going to show you what you can do if you're seated in a chair. If you're on the floor, you take your feet together and think about what color you want your butterfly to be. I think mine will be purple today. And you can start to flutter your butterfly wings just like this. And if you're in a chair, you can let your arms flutter, just lifting your elbows up and down. And think about being a proud butterfly, sitting up nice and tall. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more time. Breathe in through your nose. And breathe out. Wonderful. Then we're going to come up from our butterfly pose into our frog pose. So just come forward. Come up onto your toes. Let your knees spread nice and wide and take your hands down towards the floor. Now we're going to think about a frog on a lily pad that is about to leap from the lily pad. And we're just going to lift our hips a little bit. So you breathe in, lift your hips. And then breathe out and bring your hips down. And then breathe in, lift your hips. Out and bring your hips down. And then do that one more time. And this time we're going to think about a hungry frog. Stick our tongue out and see if we can catch a fly. So breathe in. Breathe out and go. Just like a hungry, hungry frog catching a fly. We're going to come up to standing. And we're going to be standing mountains. We're going to make our body strong and tall like a mountain. If you were to try to push a mountain over, could you push a mountain? 
You can't because they're very, very strong. So you might start, you may notice if your feet are pointing out to the sides like this, look down at your feet and point your toes forward just a little bit and have your feet as wide as it feels comfortable in your body. Now plant your feet down like you're rooting your feet down into the ground. Stand up nice and tall. And think about a mountain. So you breathe in, stretch your arms up, make a strong, tall mountain. Breathe out and bring your hands back down. Breathe in, reach your arms up. Breathe out, bring your hands down. One more time. Breathe in, stretch up. And breathe out, bring your hands down. Now we're going to be bright shining stars, like the bright shining stars that you are. So just spread your feet to the outside of your mat, nice and wide, and see if you can point your toes forward. Now start to stretch your arms out, pointing your fingers away from each other, like a strong, bright, shining star in the sky. Now you might even want to make your fists squeeze tight, and then reach your fingers out like you're a sparkling star, so you decide what kind of star you want to be. Or if you want to be a still star, just reaching your fingers out. Now breathe in through your nose, and out through your nose. Say, I'm a superstar. Awesome, that's exactly what you are. Now you bring your hands down, and we're gonna do a yogi jumping jack. So we'll try this together. Bend your knees, take your hands out like this, and on the count of three, we're just gonna jump our feet and our hands together. One, two, three, jump. Awesome, so good. Now our next pose is going to be tree pose. Tree pose requires a lot of focus and concentration. Now, if you're in a chair for tree pose and you're sitting in a chair, you're going to focus on doing the arm movements, like growing the branches of your tree and standing strong on top of the tree. Take your feet, look down at your feet, point your toes forward, and just see if you can bend your knees and rock back and forth a little bit. Just feel your feet on the earth. Think about a tree, how roots go up through a tree. We're just going to tap our right leg. Tap that right leg. And then bring your heel right inside your ankle there. So we're going to work on our balance. If you have a wall next to you, you can use a wall. If you have a chair, you can take, place your hand on a chair or a table, or you can stand against the wall. So press your feet down, make a strong, tall tree. Bring your hands together in your heart and look right in front of you. Find something to focus on. Breathe in. Breathe out. And you can keep your hands here, or if you want, you can grow your branches. Think about what kind of tree branches you want to have. They could be a palm tree, apple tree, orange tree, grapefruit tree, an aspen. Okay, now bring your hands back. Take that foot back down. Shake, shake your body out a little bit. Look down at your toes. Make sure your toes are pointing forward and then tap your left leg. Bring that heel right inside of the ankle and stand really strong and tall like your foot is rooted in the ground. Take your hands to your heart. See if you can focus right in front of you. And you can stay here or you can start to grow your branches. Breathe in, breathe out, let your hands come back down, let your foot come back down, and if you were wobbly during that time at all, that's okay, sometimes trees wobble, right, it's okay to be wobbly, just working on our balance and finding that strength within. So we're going to come back down onto our mat, mat and we're going to do monkey toes. So you're just going to take your feet out in front of you. Keep your knees bent and think about how monkeys like to play with their toes. So we're going to see if we can reach for our toes. So you'll just reach your arms up, breathe in, and then breathe out, bend forward, and see if you can tickle your monkey toes. You can even make monkey noises if you felt like it. If you feel like it. If not, that's okay. You're just using your breath. Again, breathe in, reach up, and then breathe out. Come back down to your monkey toes, tickle your monkey toes. 
And then one more time. Reach up. And breathe out. Keep those knees bent. Nice. And just relax here. Take a breath in. Breathe out. Nice. I'm going to come laying all the way down. And I'm just going to go ahead and lay sideways so you can see. I'm going to do sponge pose. Sponge pose is a nice pose to do. Sometimes to squeeze out frustration. Sometimes when we do sports, we can get a little bit frustrated, right? Or squeeze out any kind of tension in the body. So I like to think about how we, it's a, a mucky, yucky sponge that sops up all, all that yucky stuff and we can just squeeze it out of our bodies. So you're going to come down. And you can just lie on your mat the regular way, but I'm going to lie sideways so you can see me. And you're just going to bring your knees in towards your body. Wrap your arms around your knees like you're giving yourself a big hug. Bring your knees towards your forehead and then just squeeze every muscle in your body as tight as you possibly can. Squeeze, 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 squeeze everything. All your muscles as tight as you can. And then just let your legs come out, let your arms come out. You're just going to lie here in your Shavasana. And just notice how your body feels after you did that practice. We did some powerful poses. So we did our seated mountain pose. We did our open but closed foot. We did our reach for the moon. Came into our butterfly pose. Went into our frog pose. Came to a standing mountain pose. And then went into our star pose. And then became strong, tall trees rooted in the ground. And then we came down into our monkey toes, squeeze all the tension out of our bodies, and now we're in our resting pose, like we're floating on a cloud. <sighs> now, when you're ready, you can stay here for longer if you want. You can stay in your shavasana as long as you want. It's nice to stay in your resting pose for a while if you can. But we'll just start to wiggle our toes, wiggle our fingers, wake up our body a little bit. Bend our knees, roll over onto your side like you're a cozy cat, resting in the windowsill. And then you're going to come all the way up onto your mat, come back to a seat, and we're going to do a few mantras. Mantras are words that we say to ourselves that remind us of our truth. So we're going to take our hands to our heart and say, I am brave. And you repeat that. And then we're going to reach our arms up and say, I am strong. And then let your hands come back down to your heart center. I am brave. Put your arms up. I am strong. One more time. I am brave. I am strong. And let your hands come back. Thank you so much for letting me share your yoga practice with you. Keep reminding yourselves of how strong and how brave you are and what superstars you all are all. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much, Shani. How incredible did it feel to say the words at the end, I am brave, I am strong. We got to try out many different yoga poses today, some sitting, some standing, and some laying down. Which of the yoga poses that we did today did you like the most? Did you like the mountain pose? Or maybe your favorite was the butterfly pose. I really liked doing the yogi jumping jack. Let us know in the chat which pose from Shawnee was your favorite. One of the amazing things about yoga is that anyone can practice it. You don't need to have any special training. There are many resources available, including online videos, virtual classes, and in-person classes that you can take part in. 
The important thing to remember is to take it slow, go at your own pace, and remember that the practice of yoga is a personal journey, not a competition with anyone else. Next, we will join Liz Ficasio, 500 hour registered yoga teacher, who will be leading us in a guided meditation called Lots of Love. There are many different ways to meditate. Some of these ask us to focus on our inner thoughts or breathing. Others may ask us to think about things going on around us. Pay attention to what Liz asks us to do in this meditation and how it is different from what we did with Susan in the Happy Heart Meditation. Take it away, Liz. Hi guys, it's Miss Liz here, and I am so excited to bring you today's meditation challenge. Today's meditation is called Lots of Love, and the purpose is to focus on things that bring us joy, both in our hearts and externally. So things that we love about ourselves and our community. And I'm gonna invite you today to practice in a space that you feel the most comfortable in. So I'm in my bedroom right now. I have some pillows behind me to make sure I'm nice and comfortable. I'm sitting on a pillow, but you might wanna meditate outside or on your couch. You can meditate in the most comfortable position, which could be sitting up, lying down, or anywhere in between, whatever feels good for your body. All right, so to start with today, we're gonna to say a few statements to ourselves. You can say these out loud, or you can see them in your, in your mind. Whatever works for you is fine with me. After that, we're going to do a guided meditation through some of our favorite things, and then we'll repeat those statements and we'll finish up for the day. All right, guys. So go ahead, get into your meditation space into the most comfortable position. And once you've arrived, I invite you to close your eyes and we'll just focus on some breathing for a little bit here, okay? Good. All right, on our next inhale, we're gonna breathe in through our nose and exhale through our mouth. Good, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Three more times, inhale, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last time, inhale. And exhale. Good. Breathing here normally. Just noticing how you feel even after these few short breaths. Do you feel excited to take this meditation challenge? Do you feel a little nervous? Maybe you don't feel different at all. Just knowing that whatever you feel is right for you. Good. Now, keeping our eyes closed, we're going to repeat a few phrases. Again, you can repeat them in your mind or out loud. The first phrase is, I love you. Okay. I am worthy. Good. I am enough. I am great. Good. I am helpful. Very nice. And our last one, I am special. Yes, you absolutely are special. Take it, taking a second with our eyes closed here to think about those words that we just said to ourselves. <sighs> Breathing in all of this good energy and exhaling any negative energy. <sighs> good. Keeping our eyes closed, let's move into our guided meditation. So here, I want you to think about something that you love about yourself. Maybe it's your eyes. Maybe it's that you're a good joke teller. Maybe you're really good at sports. Just something that's special about you that you think is so great. It can be more than one thing. 
good. All right. Now I want you to move on and I want you to think of something you're good at. This time get a little more specific here. Maybe it's cooking a certain dish. Maybe you're really good at braiding your hair. Maybe you give the best compliments that always bring a smile to someone's face. What's something that you're good at? Again, it can be one thing or it can be many, many things. All right, good. From here, I want you to think of a song that makes you smile. Hopefully you can hear that song start to play in your head and you have a big smile coming across your face. If you can't choose between one song, that's okay. Maybe it's an artist that you love or a CD. Good. Excellent. Still keeping our eyes closed here. We're going to think of someone or something that you love. This might be a family member or a pet. It might be a memory or a friend. It might be something with all of the above that I just mentioned. But somebody who makes your heart full or something that makes you just feel safe and secure. And you just love being around that person or thing. Good. Let's go ahead and exhale all of the air out of our bodies. <sighs> Take a big inhale. And exhale. <sighs> Good. You can keep your eyes closed here, or if you'd like to open them, we're going to work on our mantras one last time before we finish our meditation. Okay. Breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. I am special. I am helpful. I am great. I am enough. And I am loved. Good. Go ahead and open the eyes if you haven't already. Let's take a big inhale, raising our arms overhead. And exhale, arms back down on our side. Two more times. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Good. I hope this meditation brought a smile to your face and I hope that you can spread that smile to others. I look forward to seeing you for our next challenge and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks guys. Welcome back everyone. And thank you, Liz, for that amazing lots of love meditation. And a shout out to Anne and Lindsay for sharing your favorite yoga poses with us in the chat. When we practice meditation regularly, we can actually change the way we think about ourselves. We will start to believe what we tell ourselves each day. So if we tell ourselves that I love myself, I am enough, I am great, I am helpful, I am special, we will start to believe these things. Take a few minutes each morning or evening and repeat these phrases or mantras to yourself. You can also develop your own phrase or mantra. For example, a phrase that I repeat to myself daily is, I do what is best for my wellness. Repeating these phrases can help build our self-confidence and make us think and feel more positively. Do any of you do this already? If so, what is a phrase or mantra that you say to yourself? We'd love to hear it in the chat. We have one final video for the day, 
before we move into our roundtable discussion. We are back with Susan Proper from our first video for a rainbow breathing meditation. Remember to try to find yourself a quiet and comfortable space. Take it away, Susan. Hey, it's Susan Proper again. Are you ready for your next meditation? I hope you are. Today we're going to do a rainbow meditation. So, you know the drill. Sit back and relax or lay down and relax. Softly close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Feel your chest rise and fall and relax. Do that for a minute or two and then we'll start our meditation. Okay. All right, you should be ready. Take a nice deep breath and sigh it out. One more time, nice deep breath and sigh it out. Now just breathe normally and relax. Feel your chest rise and fall as you just breathe normally. Imagine a big, beautiful rainbow in front of you. See all of its colors. Feel the colors. Imagine the color red is glowing brighter than the rest. And there is red all around you. Breathe in the color red. Think to yourself, I am safe. Say to yourself, I feel safe. Now imagine the color orange is glowing brighter and the orange is all around you. Breathe in orange. Think to yourself, I feel my feelings stirring in my body. Say to yourself, I feel peaceful. Next, imagine the color yellow is glowing and is all around you. Breathe in yellow. Think to yourself, I am powerful. Say to yourself, I feel confident. Now imagine the color green is glowing brighter and there is green all around you. Breathe in the color green. Think to yourself, 
My family and friends love me, and I love them. Say to yourself, I feel loved. Imagine the color blue is getting brighter and light blue is all around you. Breathe in the glowing light blue. Think to yourself, people listen when I talk and I am a good listener. Say to yourself, I feel heard. Now imagine the color dark blue, also called indigo, getting brighter. And the dark blue is all around you. Breathe in the dark blue. Think to yourself, I have a great imagination. Say to yourself, I see great things happening for me. Now imagine the color purple is getting brighter and the color purple is all around you. Breathe in purple. Think to yourself, I am wise. Say to yourself, I am smart. Imagine one more time your big, bright, beautiful rainbow. And notice if you see anything. Feel anything. Hear anything. Or notice anything else. Now take a deep breath and sigh it out. And wiggle your toes. And take another deep breath. And sigh it out. And wiggle your fingers. And one last deep breath and sigh it out. And now gently open your eyes and get ready for a beautiful day. Namaste.
Thank you, Susan, for that relaxing rainbow breathing technique and welcome back everyone. Did one of the colors feel more powerful or more relaxing to you than the others? If so, which one? Let us know which color felt the strongest to you in the chat. That was our final meditation and yoga video for the day. Before we introduce our round table, let's recap what we've done so far. First, we learn the difference between meditation, which is focused on our thoughts, and yoga, which is focused on movement. We learn that both yoga and meditation can help us relieve stress and control our emotions. Then, we got to practice four different types of meditation and yoga together. You can practice any of these meditation techniques, happy heart, lots of love, or rainbow breathing whenever you like. You can also try out the yoga movements we did with Shawnee and add in your own as well. Now it is time for our roundtable discussion about mental and emotional wellness, led by Dr. Maribel Del Rio Roberts, a psychiatrist and Special Olympics Florida Strong Minds Clinical Director. Our panelists for today include two Special Olympics Florida athletes, Jacob and Frank, and one Special Olympics Florida Unified Partner, Samantha. Dr. Maribel, over to you. So thank you for joining us for this engaging discussion with our Special Olympics athletes and unified partners. I'm Dr. Maribel Del Rio Roberts. I am a uh, licensed clinical psychologist and I am one of the uh, clinical directors for the Strong Minds program. And I'm really excited to be here to chat with our panelists so that we can talk about some of the strategies that help them cope with stress. So I think it's important um, before we actually talk about strategies that we remind ourselves what stress is and how we might experience stress. So stress is when we feel overwhelmed, when we feel that there's so much going on around us that we don't know how to cope or we don't know how we're going to get through everything. And so our bodies and our minds generally react to that. So our bodies might um, express it in different ways. Our hearts might feel like they're starting to race. We might start to feel butterflies in our stomach. Uh, we might feel it in our heads or we might feel sweaty palms. So I think it's important that we gain insight from our amazing athletes and unified partners regarding things that work for them. So let's go ahead and have each of them introduce themselves a little bit. Um, so we'll go ahead and start off with Jacob. Jacob, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you like about Special Olympics. Hi, my name is Jacob Sayre. I'm 30 years old. I love Special Olympics for the part that we're able to compete year round and we can build friendships and focus on helping building each other up. Wonderful, thank you, Jacob. Frank, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, my name is Frank Russell. I'm 20 and I've been an athlete for eight years. Wonderful. Do you wanna tell us what sports you're involved in? Well, as of now, I've been doing swimming, running, and cycling, and all that is for training to the triathlon. I'm also in a competition with volleyball and tennis, and I'm also doing weightlifting. Great. Wonderful. Thank you, Frank. Sammy, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm Samantha Meter. Um, I'm currently a second year rising junior at the University of Florida. I've been involved with Special Olympics pretty much my whole life because my sister is a Special Olympics athlete uh, focusing on gymnastics. And so the past year I served as the UF Special Olympics 
community outreach director, and this year I'm going to be the U.S. Special Olympics president. Great, wonderful. So we thank you all for being here. We know that the past year has been stressful for many. Things have changed and we've had to adapt and learn how to manage our stress in different ways. So I would love to hear a little bit um, from each of you in terms of your experiences. So Sammy, I wanna start off with you. Can you tell us a little bit about how do you know when you feel stressed? I think of course, the first thing that I recognize is that my heart kind of starts racing, like you mentioned. Um, I start having all these thoughts piling up in my brain, and then I start finding it a lot more difficult to concentrate, um, and I just kind of start to feel overwhelmed. So those are kind of like the beginning signs for me when I know that I'm starting to get really stressed. So I think the first thing that I have to do when I start to notice these signs is kind of stop and take a breath, which is why I think all of the practices we've been doing this morning have been so helpful because they kind of focus on first just making sure you're getting that oxygen to your brain, taking a moment to breathe and kind of recognize what's going on in my body and how can I how can I better serve my body and how can I I focus and calm down so that I can do effective and proactive work. Absolutely. And you've made some really important points. Um, you know, taking the time to recognize where am I feeling stress? Taking the time to slow down a little bit and to do things like taking deep breaths can be very helpful. So thank you for sharing that with us. Frank, tell us a little bit about how do you know when you feel stressed? Do you feel it anywhere in your body? Well, I'll feel stressed when I happen to be tired. And when I'm That's tired, I go up stairs and recollect my thoughts. And when I recollect my thoughts, I relax. Great. So when you you start to realize that you feel stressed when you're tired. So being tired is a trigger for you. It seems like and going upstairs and lying down and just being able to get your thoughts together sometimes helps calm your body down a little bit. Great. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the other strategies that you all use um, in just a bit. Um, Jacob, when you're stressed, do you feel it anywhere in your body? Do you feel your thoughts are racing? Do you feel your palms get sweaty? Do you feel it your stomach? What, what happens when you feel stressed? When I get stressed, um, I notice that like to what you were saying, my my hands do tend to get uh, sweaty. Um, I might tend to talk a lot more, um, might feel nervous or start feeling anxiety uh, just uh, out of the blue, which will help me to figure out, okay, something's up. Why am I stressed? And at that moment, I just had to figure out, okay, I need to uh, stop myself and take a moment to uh, evaluate, you know, why am I getting all stressed out? Absolutely. And there are many different things that can make us feel stressed. Sometimes some of us become stressed when we're about to compete or we're about to perform and we feel pressure in certain situations. For others, it might be being in a new situation or meeting new people. For others, I know for myself, when I have a lot of things to do and I don't think I have enough time to get them all done, that can be a stress trigger for me. So we all have different stress triggers. And sometimes it can just be not waking up and not feeling yourself that day. So Jacob, maybe you can start us off and tell us a little bit about what are some of the things that you like to do that help you relax? One of the things that I notice helps, uh, can help relax, help you uh, relieve stress, um, get your mind off of things where you can just focus on one thing and also it's good for your mind is 
building Legos, which isn't childish uh, for a lot of people who think that. It's actually something that's proven to help your mind. And I got an example of something here. <laughs> this thing, oh, if I can get it to show. Um, we see it. It's a little bit uh, cutting out on it, but it, what it is is a wide wing, um, but off of Star Wars, but it has like a thousand something pieces on it. And the thing is, when you're trying to put like a puzzle together, you really have to think hard about it. So you have no time to focus on anything else. So if you're not focusing on anything else, you're focused on one thing. It helps you to not focus on the stressful things. So you're redirecting yourself to something that's more beneficial to you. Um, and you can do this with uh, other things too. Um, like, for example, uh, if you're stressed out about something, you can go to like a hot tub or something with like steam, you know, because steam is a good thing to uh, relieve you of stress. Wonderful. So you mentioned some important concepts there. You talked about focusing on something that helps you distract yourself from some of those anxious or stressful thoughts, right? And so focusing on Legos and having to sit and plan and think about how you're going to build whatever it is that you're working on is going to help you feel more focused and just more relaxed because you're blocking out some of those what we call intrusive thoughts that we sometimes experience when we are stressed um, or feeling worried or anxious. So that's a wonderful strategy. Maybe it's doing something relaxing for your body, whether it's getting a massage or getting into a, the pool for a swim or a hot tub. Water tends to be very relaxing as well. So those are some, some great strategies. Thank you for sharing those, Jacob. Frank, what about you? Tell us a little bit about, I know you mentioned you like to quiet your mind. So tell us a little bit about how do you do that? I recollect my thoughts and meditate. Excellent. So meditation works for you. Is that something yeah. that you practice regularly? Do you tend to meditate every day or, you know, once or twice a week? Is that something that you usually once a do? Week. Once a week. Wonderful. And there are many different ways that we can meditate. Sometimes we can close our eyes and picture something relaxing that we find enjoyable or relaxing. And other times we can use an app or listen to a video or relaxing music, and that might help us relax. Is there anything else that you like to do that helps you relax? Is it doing anything physical like playing sports or going for a walk, uh, maybe writing down your feelings? Is there anything at all that you enjoy? Else that you enjoy? I oh, do that's, art. that's wonderful. Wow. So that's almost almost the same process as building with Legos is when you're focused on your art, you have to focus all of your attention and your energy on carefully planning what you're going to put together. How much time did it take you to put that together? Two days. Two days. Wow. Okay. And Frank, what tends to be a situation that sometimes leads you to be stressed? Is it competing? Is it having a lot of things to do? Is it the the COVID having to deal with COVID? It's having a lot of things to do. Having a lot of things to do. I know that's a trigger for me as well. So I can certainly understand that. So thus far, we have some differing, some different uh, strategies and perspectives that seem to be really helpful. Um, Samantha, tell us a little bit about you and what do you find helpful when you're feeling stressed? I think um, a lot of times when I get stressed, I tend to have a lot of thoughts going on in my mind and it feels hard to kind of pick them apart. So a really helpful thing for me when I'm stressed is I'll just journal. I have a journal I've been using for a few years and when I just start feeling really overwhelmed, I kind of just sit down and I 
don't, I kind of just let the thoughts flow and try not to judge them. And I just write out everything that's going on in my mind. And for me, that helps me kind of solidify what it is that's stressing me out, what it is that needs to get done and kind of just alleviates a lot of that stress and a lot of that pressure in my mind. Um, so I think journaling is a really great, great way for me to kind of sort through my thoughts. And aside from journaling, another thing I love to do is kind of just uh, go for a walk. Um, I'll reach out to one of my roommates and we'll just go outside and just spending some time in the sun is always something that has brought me a lot of peace and helped me kind of recenter and ground myself when things can get a little bit hectic. Wonderful. So putting your thoughts on paper and maybe being able to come back to them and reread them and figure out what the pattern is in terms of what is making me feel stressed. That's a good one. Uh, exercise. Exercise is really important. And as we know, the more we exercise, the less stress and the less sadness we're going to experience because exercise makes us feel good. It's a way of not only keeping us healthy, our physical health, but also our emotional health as well. So exercise is wonderful. What about talking to someone about your feelings, about your stress? Do any of you talk to anyone about your stress or how you feel when you feel stressed and seek out some support? Yes, I see you shaking your head. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, I wasn't to... sure uh, who was going to speak, but I definitely do. I think humans are central uh, to the human experience. So it's really important that we reach out to others. I think, especially with this pandemic, it's felt kind of lonely sometimes only having people on screens. So it's really important that we make that effort to reach out to the people in our homes and even just giving someone a phone call and hearing their voice, I think is really important and it really can help us cope with some really challenging times. Um, I definitely think just reaching out to people is really important. And there's a lot of fear in kind of expressing how we feel because that makes us vulnerable. But I think um, when we're vulnerable with the right people and in the right places, it can actually be very empowering. And we might open the door to a conversation that we might've never had before because by us being vulnerable with the right people, we can help them also feel comfortable to be open and we can make that connection and that can be extremely empowering and, and uplifting. Very wise, Samantha. Um, and you're absolutely right. Uh, focusing on building those relationships, building those connections with people that are important to us, whether it's family members or friends, taking the time to check in on them and reach out to them when we feel like we need help. Um, Jacob, is, is there anyone that you reach out to, a friend, a coach, a family member, when you feel maybe you need support? Um, the best thing that I have saw uh, was I had my parents close by, so I can always talk to them. But I have young adult friends from church that I can talk to. Um, sometimes I'll talk to some Special Olympics staff, you know, because uh just have stuff in common uh, but for the audience what i would recommend um, if you have any stress of any kind and there's really you feel pressure on talking to certain people you can talk to like a friend at church that's a young adult um, maybe a pastor or see a psychiatrist or a doctor um, there's nothing wrong with doing that and it definitely uh, relieve you of stress. I used to see a psychiatrist um, because of things that in the past that has happened uh, that has helped me to uh, put that bad stuff that has happened towards me aside. So seeing a psychiatrist, I would highly recommend if you're afraid to talk to people because psychiatrists, you're in a peaceful environment. Um, you can easily say uh, anything without worrying about it getting out. <clears throat> excuse me, without worrying about it getting out to anybody. 
one, you brought up a good point. So seeking out the help of a professional. So if there isn't someone that you feel comfortable talking to that, you know, seek out the help of a professional, whether it's a therapist, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, anyone that, um, you know, can help you. And as you mentioned, it's a safe space uh, to express your thoughts and feelings. I think another point that is important for us to remember is that sometimes when we're stressed and overwhelmed, we might have a tendency to have some negative thoughts and feelings about ourselves. And the importance of, as we saw in one of the meditations, of saying positive things about ourselves, right? And that helps us regain our confidence and it helps us recenter ourselves. So Frank, do you ever say positive statements to yourself? Excellent. So things like, I can do it. I've got this. You know, I'm going to get through it. Um, I'm strong. I'm smart. These are all examples of positive self statements. Um, Samantha, are there any examples that you want to share in terms of maybe some positive self statements you say to yourself when you're feeling overwhelmed to get you through it? Definitely. I, I kind of just tell myself I am capable, I am empowered. Um, things like that, I think, are extremely important. And I'm really big on writing. So I actually have like a wall of sticky notes that I kind of just write those affirmations on. So um, for me, just physically seeing them and writing them down has been a really great way for me to internalize them. So I kind of just have like a wall of sticky notes with affirmations just so I can physically and visibly remind myself of them. Great. So now I want to give you um, an opportunity. Is there anything that any of our panelists want to add or say that they think it would be important for the viewers to know that would might be helpful to them when it comes to dealing with stress? Um, so I know there not everybody is uh religious but i this definitely i believe helps um if it does say in the bible i can do all things for christ who strengthens me but if you uh if you say to yourself i can do all things right uh, and then just keep repeating so, that you know i can do all things on your faith right whatever you know, that your faith might be could be could be helpful as well so, and I think that, you know, we've talked about some wonderful strategies that you all have shared, um, you know, whether it's leaning on someone and talking to someone that you trust or engaging in some physical activity, whether it's exercise or something relaxing, utilizing meditation or maybe some stretching or yoga exercises, engaging in activities that you enjoy, such as art or Legos. These are all things that can be helpful when to help us manage and deal with stress. So we wanna thank you all for joining us. Thank you to our panelists for a wonderful discussion and to our viewers for joining us for this roundtable discussion. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Dr. Maribel, Jacob, Frank, and Samantha for that roundtable discussion. It's so important to highlight that yoga and meditation are just one of many different ways that we can manage our mental and emotional well being. All of our panelists mentioned some great tips about the importance of recognizing when we are stressed and different things that we can do when we're feeling that way. Remember that it is completely normal to feel stressed or anxious. We all feel that way sometimes. And then it doesn't mean that anything is wrong with your body or mind. It really is amazing how much just a few minutes a day spent deep breathing, focusing on our thoughts, and participating in our favorite hobbies such as Legos, art, or exercise and movement can change the way we think and allow us to be more relaxed and manage our emotions. If you enjoyed the videos that we shared today, you can replay them and find other yoga and meditation videos on the Special Olympics Florida YouTube channel. Try to start by spending five to 10 minutes a day practicing your favorite yoga and meditation techniques and build from there. 
I would now like to transition us into the final segment of our whole school engagement series with Danielle Kent. Today's session focuses primarily on the benefits and expectations of field days and our family action network. We hope you enjoy the rest of today's content and I will now turn it over to Danielle. and welcome back to our virtual youth summit. We're so happy that you're back again to learn a little bit about our whole school engagement and community engagement initiatives. Today, we are going to be talking about field days and our family action network with Hannah. So we're very excited to have her here today. Hey, Danielle, I'm doing really good. I'm excited to be here, excited to be invited to talk with you guys. Yes, we're so excited for you to be here. And today with Hannah, we're going to be talking about field days, which she has a great uh, perspective and a lot of experience on this topic. And then we're also going to talk about our fan action network, which Hannah actually helped create for our organization. So we're really excited to get uh, more insight on these, um, these topics and initiatives. So to get started, Hannah, for our first question to start things off, for those that are new to Special Olympics and have never seen a Special Olympics competition or field day, what is the difference between those two? So the biggest difference is that most of the time with a field day, um, you're going to be working with a school. And uh, it's going to be something that the teacher or the leader at the site or, or school is planning. So it's not something that a Special Olympics team will come in and plan. Um, it's something that we're there to support and assist with. But for the most part, the, the school itself is planning and running the event fully themselves. Um, and then we're just there to help where needed. Also, most of the time with field days, you're going to be working with our non-competitive programs. So some of our programs for our school age students um, is what you would typically be having a field day for. OK, perfect. Um, and when you're out at these field days, what kind of activities or stations do you most commonly see these teachers putting on for the schools? That's a good question. There's really a lot, and it depends on what program the school is running. So if the school is running our Young Athletes program, which is for our young kids age two to seven, um, you'll be seeing a lot of basic skill stations. So walking, running, balance. You might um, see a balance beam out there with kids walking across a balance beam. You may see them tossing bean bags through hoops, um, just showing off their skills. If you're going up into our programs for older age students, you might see um, some softball skills or soccer skills. So we might have some soccer goals out there where they're showing um, that they've learned to shoot correctly or pass the ball correctly to one of their um, teammates. So it really depends on the program, but most of the time we're working on basic skills and at these field days, um, since they are typically non-competitive, meaning the students are just showing off their skills and they're not competing with one another. Um, so yeah, that's usually what we see. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And just to follow up with the field days, are any kind of awards typically given out, you know, a certificate or a participation ribbon or medals? Yes. So even though we're not competing typically at these field days, um, we do provide awards to the schools that are doing these field days. So Depends on the program again, but everyone that participates um, in a field day will get a participation ribbon or certificate, depending on what program. And even with our motor activity training program, which is one of our non-competitive programs, we actually give medals for that um, for that field day. So it's really a special event, and it really makes the event really fun and exciting um, to really be earning something. Yeah, so I was going to say, everybody loves getting some kind of award or ribbon at the end of a, of a fun field day, for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, yes. So, um, Hannah, what kind of benefits have you seen in regards to a field day, a, a school hosting a field day? 
So I think some of the main benefits we see is family engagement, one, um, because a lot of the times at these field days, the programs that are running them, um, most of the practices and the participation is happening during the school day. So parents aren't necessarily seeing their athlete participate on a daily basis. So uh, it's really special for family members to be able to attend these events and watch their athlete and how they've progressed throughout the year. Um, a lot of the time we hear from our family members, wow, last time I saw my athlete try to do this skill, um, they weren't as successful, you know, as they are now. So we're, it's exciting for families to see the progress that their athletes are making with our programs. Also, it's a really good way to involve the entire school. So the whole school engagement piece you really see at these events. Um, a lot of the time, these are unified events. So you do have typical students coming in and it's just such a fun time. And we also have a lot of classes that will come out during the field days and cheer on the athletes and cheer on the field day itself. So they make signs and um, banners and things like that. And it's just so fun. So the whole school engagement piece is also another huge thing that uh, a huge positive of the field days. Yeah, that's great. The whole idea of the inclusion and acceptance and just getting everybody involved and to being together. That's great. Um, so if a school was interested in doing a field day, what steps would they need to take to, to do this initiative? So the first step would be just registering for one of our programs. So to have a field day at a school or a site, you have to be working with Special Olympics in some way, participating with us. So, um, for example, if you wanted to host a young athletes field day at your school for your younger kids, um, you would need to register for the young athletes program and just participate in that program for a certain amount of time. And then once you're done with those skills and you feel like your students have learned the skills that you want them to learn through the program, um, all you do is just submit a form to receive some shirts and awards from us. It's really simple. And then from there, you're welcome to plan your event. Um, it can be any day that you want it to be during the school day. Um, any time, like I said, the, the person in charge of the program itself really has full control on how they want the event to look. So it's really special and it can be very school specific. So it's a really easy process. The main thing is just making sure that you're registered with us um, for a special fix program. Okay, perfect. Um, and just to follow up, you said you provide t-shirts and you provide the ribbons. Do you guys provide any kind of equipment if they needed anything specific to run that field day, any stations or activities? That's a good question. So when a site registers for the first time with us for any of our school-based programs, they receive equipment when they, when they register. So any equipment they would need for that field day, they already have. Um, we do provide some other resources for the field day. So we ourselves, um, the special mix staff are there to assist in any way that that is needed. Um, but we also provide um, this year we're providing PPE kits to our schools, which has been really, really spectacular. The schools have loved that. Um, but we also provide collateral banners, things like that, that our schools can have at their events. So they should pretty much have everything they need aside from the shirts and awards um, when they go to plan their event, but we're always here to kind of provide what else might be needed. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, you know, now that, you know, school liaison or a teacher, now that they understand the steps of setting up a field day, how can Special Olympics Florida help in that process? Yeah, so a lot of the times we get questions on, you know, what is the best way to run this field day? And it's such a hard question because there are thousands of ways to run a field day. You know, it can be right. um, very simple where it's just in your classroom and you might have a couple of students working on skills and then you give them the award and go back to your regular school day. Um, you might have an event that is an all day event or even a multiple, multiple day event. Um, we've had people invite Kona ice out to their events. Um, so it's really the, I think our role as special Olympics is to kind of give them some ideas on what we've seen at the events before and kind of let them run with it. We've seen some really um, spectacular events in, in our time. So 
there, the possibilities are endless. So I think the main thing we provide other than just the equipment and the collateral um, is just kind of ideas on, on ways to make the event really special for the athletes and the families that attend. Perfect. Well, awesome. Well, thank you, Hannah. That's the, all the questions I have for the field day. So now I kind of want to switch gears and talk about the exciting uh, Family Action Network program that you helped create. So to start that off, um, what exactly um, can you explain what is the Family Action Network? Yeah, so I'm really excited about the Family Action Network. Um, it's been a long process and a long time coming, so I'm excited that it's finally launched. It launched in September. So basically, Family Action Network is a group that we want our families to join. You can think of it as almost a membership. Um, obviously, it's free. There's no cost to anything we do at Special Olympics. But um, it's something that we want families to join to be a part of a, a broader community. Um, a lot of the time, what we hear is that there's so many opportunities for our athletes through Special Olympics. Um, but sometimes our families aren't connecting with one another, even though they may come to our events, they might not have all the information they need each time. So Family Action Network was really created to have a community for our families to join and be a part of something greater within Special Olympics, kind of have their own niche um, within Special Olympics. And so that's really the goal um, of what Family Action Network is. That's really exciting, Hannah. Um, so to follow up with Family Action Network, how would a family get involved with this program? So Family Action Network is statewide, um, but we do ask that you sign up to be a part of Family Action Network. So it's just as easy as going on our website and going to the Family Action Network page and just signing up. You fill out a few questions. Um, and then from there, we send you a free T-shirt, which is always great. Who doesn't love a free T-shirt? Um, and so from there, you're, you're joined. You're a part of the Family Action Network. And then um, we do have area team members that may follow up with you at some point um, as in regards to ways to be active members of Family Action Network. So ways that it's kind of, uh, it can be different in every area on how you can be an active member of the Family Action Network. So what do you do when you actually join it? Um, every area is different. So in some areas you may have a Family Action Network member that um, may attend events and welcome families to the event. Um, we may have a Family Action Network member that is just a part of the group and is just getting good information from um, the Special Olympics staff and, and sharing that with other family members that might not yet be a part of Family Action Network. So there are a lot of ways that you can be involved once you're part of Family Action Network, but the main thing is to go online to our website and sign up, and then from there you'll start getting information. Okay, great. And just let everybody know our website is specialolympicsflorida.org. So you can go on and sign up. And just to follow up, Hannah, how do you guys communicate with the family members? Is it do you just email once a month or do you email when you guys have information to give out? How does that process work? Right now we're emailing just when we have information to give out. Um, when our competitions pick back up, and I they are soon, it sounds like. Um we will be sending out things more periodically. Right now, um, it's just kind of when we have information or an opportunity, uh, we send that out via email. Okay, perfect, great. And um, with the Family Action Network, what's the impact that it can have on Special Olympics Florida moving forward? I think the main impact we're wanting Family Action Network to have on Special Olympics is just the community piece. Um, I think we've all attended uh, a lot of events in our time, especially you, Danielle, you're an event guru. So, um, and when you go to those events, I think something I would like to see come from Family Action Network is family members knowing one another in a really special way. So those family members that are new to Special Olympics, they come into an event having a connection already and not having to make one themselves. And I think that's something that's going to be really special for Special Olympics uh, Florida. And I think that the more families connect with one another, the stronger our organization will grow. Um, and I think the stronger our athletes will be because our family members are really our champions. Um, so I, I think that's kind of the main thing that will help Special Olympics Florida. 
Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Hannah. Um, that concludes our question and answer. So hopefully you guys learned something about field days and you can run that initiative in your school. And hopefully for our families that are on, you guys will go on line and sign up for our family action network and be a part of, uh, you know, our community and our organization. So Hannah, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. So we just finished a great segment with Hannah on Field Days and Family Action Network. So now we're going to uh, switch gears here and we're going to do our talk about another initiative with uh, Joseph Justin and Logan Alvarez, two unified partners. And we're going to have a discussion about pep rallies and team send off. So, guys, thank you so much for joining. How are you doing today? Good. Doing all right. Good. Awesome. Excellent. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So for Logan, I'm going to start off with you. This question is for both. But Logan, how did you get involved as a unified partner? So I've been involved with Special Olympics in one way or another since I, as long as I can remember. I remember being seven years old, volunteering at the Florida State Games and waiting there, handing out lunches and then the wristbands for people to be able to get lunch. And my mom is a teacher of used to be a teacher of kids with intellectual disabilities. Now she's an AP at a school with students that are disabil- have disabilities. And she would take me and my sister to events. And as we grew older, I really wanted to be able to play alongside the, the kids on the Special Olympics team became part of my family. And I wanted to be able to play alongside with my family and be able to compete and seeing how, the, how much fun they were having. So when I got to high school, it was my main goal to create a unified team so that I could become a unified partner and be included in this atmosphere this amazing atmosphere that's created by being in a unified team. Awesome. That's great that you brought that, uh, that program into your school. It does a lot of great things for our athletes. And uh, Joe, same question to you. How did you get involved as a unified partner? So I actually first got involved as a unified partner back in middle school. Uh, our school had just created the unified sports program the year before and our principal came and was looking for students who'd be interested in not only being part of the class, but being part of the unified sports program that went along with it. And I'd already known a few of the kids that were in the unified sports team because we went to elementary school together and his name was Raquan. And we had, we had a really good connection back in elementary school, always playing together. And I knew, yeah, let let me give this a shot. And once I did, I, I knew I wanted to do it all throughout high school. That's awesome. All right, Joe, I'm going to start this question off for you. This is for both of you guys. But Joe, what was your favorite part of being a unified partner? I say my favorite part about being a unified partner was the friendships I got to make along the way and seeing the impact that our team had on not only our community, but the school as well. Awesome. And, uh, Joe, do you still have those friendships with the athletes that you played with on your unified sports teams? Yes, I do, actually. Um, I'm not in Ormond Beach right now where Seabreeze is at, but every time I go back, I I visit my team. Yeah. That's awesome. They're still in school, so it's, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome creating those lifetime friendships and bonds with our athletes. And um, Logan, same question. What was your favorite part of being a unified partner? Just being able to be in the inclusive environment that Special Olympics creates and like seeing how much of an impact it makes in the school and the community and just seeing the excitement of people from all different backgrounds, being able to come together and compete in sports together. Not even even if they didn't play sports previously, they were able to help out and just see the excitement and how people are making memories that last them a lifetime. Yes, that's awesome. Thank you so much. So, Joe, I'm going to start off with you. Can you talk about a time that your school had a send off for one of your unified sports teams and how that impact impacted the entire school? Yeah, so actually, one of the best send offs I've ever had was for unified flag football. And how it happened was, is we had our flag football team was going off the state. So we were having a pep rally and unlike other pep rallies where we were kind of held into the gym, 
we were actually in the courtyard and we had the band, we had the cheerleaders, we had all the raging students surrounding us as we're getting ready to go to Orlando to compete. And I've never felt so much school pride in one place before. And it left an everlasting effect on the students getting to be a part of an entire school community and knowing that you had teachers, students, faculty, everyone just supporting you as you make this journey. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And to follow up with that, Joe, do you feel that that send off made the athletes feel included and that they were going out to represent their school? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, I have played sports my entire life and getting in that environment where you have an entire community like your school backing you, it just all you can feel like is that you're doing it for them. You know, you're you put all that hard work in through practice, through playing games just to get to where you are now. And inclusion, yes. I mean, how can you not feel included when you have a thousand students surrounding you? But I think the amount of like pride that we all felt as we went on, just it was everlasting. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that would be experience that our athletes will never forget. And that's something at Special Olympics that we want to do. We want to help create those memories and those experiences. So, Logan, I know you had a pep rally at your school, Miami Southridge Senior High School, uh, when you were recognized as a top five ESPN banner school. Can you talk about that pep rally and that experience that you had with the whole entire school? Definitely. So my school had many pep rallies where the unified team was included in the pep rally. Like we would play soccer and all these different sports. And then the, with my mom as the coach and with the principal's help, they'd always make sure we were included in the prep rallies and always had a time stamp because normally we were short on time at the pep rallies, but they always made time for us. And you could really see the enthusiasm in the school. Like it reached out to different groups of people and students that normally wouldn't have known about Special Olympics. And being spot, like, spotlighted in a pep rally really gain support and people's interest to want to join the club. So not only just students, but teachers wanted to help coach and then administrators wanted to be a part of it as well. And then everybody became willing to do whatever they can to help out and help us reach the certain limit, the certain points that we are really striving to reach. That's great. So that exposure helped to, to bring about Special Olympics and have everybody involved. That's great. And to follow up, Logan, um, we know that you guys had a pep rally where your school was recognized as a top five ESPN banner school. So we know ESPN was at your school. We know this was a huge deal. So can you talk about how that pep rally went and how that just energized the whole entire school? The ESPN pep rally was an amazing experience. This is probably one of a lifetime. I can remember just the excitement of everybody, the partners, the athletes, the entire school. Over 800 kids were in the gym and they all had Special Olympics shirt. And just seeing how much of an impact Special Olympics has made on the school, but then also how inclusive it became. And the pep rally really highlighted that, just seeing all these different students and teachers and administrators and being recognized by ESPN shows that hard work towards inclusion is possible. And no matter what the barriers are, it is possible to reach inclusion and spread it in throughout the community. That's awesome. And that was just, that was a great a uh, moment for you guys to be recognized as a top five unified champion school. It's an, an amazing accomplishment. Um, so you did mention before, Logan, that your unified sports teams were recognized um, in the pep rallies, which is great. Um, did your unified sports teams ever play in, in front of the entire school? Did you guys, for example, ever have a basketball game or a soccer game where the whole school was able to come out and cheer you guys on? Yes, we actually did. We had a soccer game in the gym. It was more of like soccer skills, like goalies and then trying to score. And then like we had the principal get involved. He was playing goalie and the athletes were scoring on him and made him kind of look bad because they were, they were really good. And then like all the different groups of people were also included. So it wasn't just a unified team. So we got everybody included in the, pep, the game. And that really helped us gain more exposure and gain awareness for Special Olympics to show that the athletes and the partners, there's no barriers in between them. It's just a competitive sport and a disability doesn't stop anybody from reaching that. Yeah, it's, it's great how sports can bring everybody together. And uh, Joe, same question for you. Um, at your school, at Seabreeze High School, um, did you guys ever, your unified sports team ever play in front of the entire school? 
Yes, we did actually. We actually played a basketball game and how it worked was is we had students purchase tickets just like as if you were going to watch a theater show, right? And mm-hmm. you got out for a couple periods and being part of the special uh, needs community, I got to see not only from the athlete point of, point of view, but from everyone who worked in our best buddies program as well, how much support and how much people want to get intrigued upon it. And then, I mean, playing the game itself, you have, you have all your friends, you have your teachers, you have faculty just there supporting you. And it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. I know the athletes were so excited to be cheered on and just feel involved and included. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So Logan, why do you think that pep rallies and team send-offs are important for our athletes in our schools? I think they're extremely important for our athletes in our schools. And how I imagine it is think about how the varsity teams at the high schools have their pep rallies and how it motivates them. And then when you bring in the unified teams to those pep rallies as well, it just gives a motivation and then shows that the school is there to support them and that they have like, it's kind of like a school pride as well. Like that the whole school has your back no matter what happens that the support of the school is there with you. And that's really true motivation. Awesome. And same question to you, Joe, why do you think that pep rallies or team send outs are important for our athletes and our schools? Yeah, I completely agree with what Logan said. And uh, it also gives the, the athletes a chance for all the work that they put in to getting to where they were to get to that pep rally stage, uh, a chance to represent themselves, you know, like uh, having that feeling it's, it's different, you know, like you can play rec sports, you can play competitive, but when you play a sport for your school and you know that your whole entire school backs you, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And just like, for them to- yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, like, playing uh, varsity football, I know how much charge it, like, put into our team every time we had a pep rally before a game, you know? And it did the same thing for Special Olympics. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very energizing moment, a moment you're just ready to go. So, understood. All right. Well, Joe and Logan, thank you so much for your time um, and discussing the pep rallies and the team send offs with us today. Uh, Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you. This year's summit has truly been inspiring and has definitely given us some great resources on how we can be our best selves. With that, I also hope that each of you have learned how important your roles are to the mission of Special Olympics. Without our athletes, families, volunteers, we can never offer the amount of impact and the opportunities to the nearly 60,000 athletes we have in the state of Florida. So on behalf of all of the team at Special Olympics Florida, thank you all for being our incredible champions. For joining us for the 2021 Youth Summit. We hope that these sessions over the past few days have shed some light on excellent tools to use on your path to great leadership. Have an amazing week and please join us again next year.